I wake up every morning and I feel sick and I can't catch my breath. You're working with lots of different emotions, but sometimes I guess they're a little bit too close to the surface. You just don't know what's going to come through the door. First part of what we're trying to do here is like to build a family. My name is Danielle Greenberg. I am 51 years old and I am a veterinary surgeon and the owner of the Liverpool Vets. Hi. How are you doing? I opened this practice because um, circumstance really led me to it. And there was a combination of um, watching corporates taking over in the city and they took over in a practice where I was hoping to become a partner. And I just didn't feel really comfortable with the way um, the practice changed after the corporate took over. Um, and the other big thing that changed for me was that I was really not very well in 2016 and I couldn't work at all and I think that I really lost a lot of fear. So a lot of the reasons that were stopping me from trying to do this by myself um, went away because I think that um, retrospectively, I think when you've kind of told you've got cancer and you're not going to make it, um, that is really scary and so I think that a lot of the things that held me back just went away and I just was like, do you know what, um, give it a whirl. There is genuinely nothing I've ever, ever, ever wanted to be or do, apart from being Destiny's Child, but <laughs> no, I don't think I'd have fitted in. Next time, but thank you so much for thinking of us. So I think Liverpool has a very strong community feel and that word of mouth is really important in terms of the people wanting to see the same um, vet and have a relationship with the vet and, and them to feel part of something um, is, has been really important and is absolutely lovely. Like I feel like I wanted to build a family as corny as that might sound, but genuinely feel a year and a bit down the line that we we have and the more people that join now feel like they're joining you know a family that's established and now we have like our own little community here my emotional attachment to the patients is because everyone who comes here i'm just so determined to do the best for them in terms of making them healthy again if i can if i can't that they have the most peaceful end that they can have and um, so just always always trying to do my best but you know sometimes you try so 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 hard to fix something with medicine or surgery and it doesn't always fit that's really difficult um, that, that is like the hardest thing. So if you've never seen anything that puts to sleep before, their breathing's going to change and it's going to get deeper. She might stretch out and then she's going to probably do some really weird type of breathing, like gaspy breaths. Um, um, but she won't know anything about it.
to. I think you can't invest yourself with passion unless you invest with emotion. Or if you invest with passion, the, the emotion has to be there. And I think most of the time when I'm in this building, I'm not very far away from tears because, you know, you're just working on emotion. Um, and I genuinely, every day feel fortunate to have robust mental health. So I know, I think I wake up every morning and I feel sick and I can't catch my breath because I'm anxious about work. But I think having spoken to a lot of people, it's actually quite healthy. You know, I think if you spoke to somebody before they had a Olympic race, they probably feel exactly the same. It's, a, you, it's performance anxiety, I think. And that's what I've told myself. But um, I can see very clearly how you can become suicidal in this job. Um, I can name five people um, that have killed themselves as veterinary surgeons. You know, you constantly work in this highly charged emotional environment and if you don't get it right, despite your best efforts and people get upset, you know, they're the really, really, really hard bits of the job. I feel really, really strongly that you need to tell that that it's okay to not be right all the time. This week, a dog came in to have a lump removed from her tummy and um, it was a really big lump. And so um, when I did the surgery and opened her up, I realized I couldn't get this lump out at all. I was attached to everything and it was as big as her tummy. The owner said, can you just do everything you can to get as much of it out as you can. So anyway, um, I did this surgery, I think it took four hours, and managed to get this enormous tumour um, out. Um, and amazingly, everything was done, and um, I was finishing up the surgery and just sewing up, I think maybe had like three or four stitches left. And she died. Um, and so while well, she had a, a cardiac arrest and we managed to resuscitate her um, and we got her back breathing and everything and um, we just couldn't wake her up and about an hour after that she had another cardiac arrest but we managed to get the owners to come in um, you know and anyway she died or she, she passed away and we let her go. I know after you know so many years of being a vet that I, that takes a lot of processing because first of all you've got to recover physically. I mean my arms and my fingers were like all swollen, my fingers were all swollen, my shoulders were all swollen because you're just operating and concentrating so hard you've got to, you know, your reaction's really emotional at the time and then you've got to process it and you've got to go, you can't help it, you go over it and over it and over it. Now what if I'd done that? Like, if I'd done that, like, I, if I could do that again, and you know you're never going to do it again, um, and I know that that's going to wake me up for weeks, you know, that's going to, I'm going to carry that around for weeks, you know, what if? To go from the euphoria of probably doing the biggest, most intricate, complex and gentle surgery I've ever done in my whole life to nothing in two minutes is a lot. Hey, uh, I'm Danielle. We're with Care for the Poor. We're with Care for the Poor. Yeah. We're Hello, a charity um, that look after dogs that belong to people who are struggling to find somewhere to live. Yeah, I've got a whole bag oh, of uh, goodies for you. We haven't oh. seen you before. Have you not seen I us? started helping um, dogs that belong to homeless people when I was 
ill and I couldn't walk. And so I believed at that time that I was never going to be a vet again. So I wanted to see if there was any way that I could, in a limited way, help. Hi, do you need something for your dog? So I reached out to a few people and one of the people who um, came back to me was Jan, who runs Care for the Poor. Um, and she just simply said, you know, can you put microchips in? And I said, yes. And um, that relationship has grown and the veterinary input that that charity has, has evolved. Um, and alongside it, I think, you know, I got better and I think that now a very big part of who I am, who this, what this business stands for, um, is about giving back to people and how powerful that is. I mean, how good it is to not just give somebody a fiver, not that that's a bad thing. Um, and I don't mean like a homeless person, any charity, but to actually go out uh, and physically be a presence and make things better, be they big or small. And I just feel absolutely passionate. I mean, Liverpool is like an amazing community and um, you can't help but be inspired to do more, you know, to do what you can. And actually what you can do is immense. But I think there is, you know, we're a city with a genuine need, but I think one of the genuine, most genuine needs is just for, you know, human touch, human contact. Do you want a Pretty hardcore, probably not with those teeth, I am guessing. Might be a bit of an ass. What I do, I, 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 I crush it. Crush Good idea. It's turned into very much more of an emotional investment in the city, in the people in the city, um, and seeing like the amazing things that go on here and being inspired by them, and just knowing that just sometimes having a conversation with somebody can make you know a massive, massive, massive difference. So um, it's not only is it something that I'm really proud to do. You know, I absolutely love doing it. I could maybe be one of those people that inspires other people to then say, do you know what, I'll go out, or I'll give my time, or I'm the biggest advocate of like, just go, you know, just go, see what you can do to help, because that's what I did, and it's led to many amazing adventures and opportunities. B is a staffy dog that belonged to a homeless gentleman and so he needed an operation and so I said I'd look after him the night after the operation and um, unfortunately slash fortunately um, his owner never came to reclaim him um, despite multiple attempts to get him home. Um, the gentleman ended up going into hospital and now feels, we've been in touch and now feels like he can't, he's not in a good place to have the dog. Meanwhile, um, that dog has become, you know, very much a loved focus in our family. And so, um, yeah, he, I don't know what happened to him before we got him because like all of his teeth are flat, 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 and they're all misshapen. So I think he must have been chewing maybe stones or he just had some stinky breath and he needed some teeth taking out. And in my mind, I just had to pull out two little incisors um, and that was all fine up until the point that there was one tooth I couldn't really decide whether it should come out or not. And I thought, do you know what, just take it out, then you don't have to come back and do it another day. And that's the one that snapped in his mouth. And um, then a kind of 20 minute window turned into, I don't know, 45 minutes of sweating and swearing and digging. And anyway, you'll be glad to know it's out. And B is absolutely fine. His mouth smells beautiful. Is owning a veterinary practice my dream career? Um, the answer to that question, I mean, being a vet is my dream career, 100%, and I feel very privileged or fortunate to be doing the job. Um, is owning my own vet, so for a really long time, I was really terrified of owning my own vet. Is it now a dream? Yeah, yeah, 
It is. I mean, it's still quite new and quite terrifying, um, but I don't regret it at all. But I don't know what else I would have done. So I'm not sure I would say I've achieved my dream. I just, I've achieved my dream in terms of my good fortune to be sitting where I am now. So that, it, that is better than a dream. <laughs>